Today, we're going to take a look at the Create New Age mod, which allows you to actually generate electricity from Create Power and allows us to generate electricity using solar power and even nuclear power. The first part of Create New Age we're going to talk about is going to be the generator coils. Now, actually using this is actually relatively simple. So first, you need to generate some SU using your regular Create components or other stuff in this mod that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. And then you feed that into a generator coil. Now around the generator coil, you do need magnetic blocks and there are five different tiers. You have tier one magnetite blocks, tier two redstone magnets, tier four layered magnets, tier eight fluxated magnets, and tier 24 netherite magnets. Then once you have your magnets in place, you can place carbon brush in front of that, which you can then use electrical conductors and wires to get it out to a basic motor or more advanced motors once you kind of have more energy being generated. And these do stack. So let's say I had enough SU to generate basically like two of these wheels, which I don't think the system does. But if the system does, putting two stacked and then putting my brush at the end, that would function and get me basically this same input as if I had two of these side by side. So that's one way to very easily kind of stack up a huge motor and generate lots of power. And with this one coil running relatively slowly, you can see we're generating 40 energy a second. And down here in our basic motor, we're using 40 energy a second to generate 69 SU. Now, one big downside of turning your SU into electricity is you'll notice that our generator coil is using 288 SU and we're only producing 69. So that's quite a big loss. This SU loss is really the main reason you'd want to upgrade your magnets as you get further along down the mod. Now, by default, you're going to be using this magnetite block, which is found by just mining around your world as an ore. And what we're doing is we're putting in 16 RPM of energy into here. You can see we're using 576 SU and only generating 171, which is a 70% energy loss. Now, if we go up and we upgrade to our redstone magnet, which is just an iron and a redstone block, we're now only at a 51% energy loss. So that's a significant improvement just by upgrading the magnets. If you go up one step further to this layered magnet, you'll see we have an actual new ore we need to make, which is gonna be this overcharged iron and overcharged gold. And this is created by using new energizers along with electricity to get your overcharged blocks. But once we do get to that point, we're now only at a 35% energy loss. So we're getting a lot more efficient with generating our power. Your next step is gonna be this fluxated magnetite, which is pretty easy to craft. You see some of that overcharged gold, the magnetite brick, and now we need overcharged diamond, which takes a ton of electricity. So once you actually get to the layered magnetite and fluxated magnetite level, you really do need to focus on generating electricity because you need to make all these overcharged items, which could take a lot of time if you're over here generating it with only 100 power per second. So let's say I want to overcharge a diamond. That's going to take well over a minute to generate with this original generator. And then all the way maxed out, we do have our netherite magnet, which is made by five overcharged diamonds and four netherite scraps. So now we're getting really expensive and this really is end game, but we're only at a 2% energy loss. So that means that Realistically, we're not losing much SU by turning into electricity and then being able to route it around to our different motors. So the way I'd actually recommend generating energy with a generator coil is first start with a single layer with a single generator coil at whatever the maximum output is of your SU generation. Now, the reason we'd want to do that is building more of these can get really expensive and it's going to take the same SU to run this faster because the scale is linear. So if I bump this all the way up, really high we're running at the same efficiency which means we're getting the same output we would as if we had a whole bunch of these so if we go from 128 to 256 we're spinning it twice as fast which means we're using half the resources to get the same output as if we had two layers spinning at 128 so speed it up instead of getting new coils and then once you are maxed out at this point let's say i have more power i'm able to use then i would add another layer slow everything down if needed but then once those two are at full speed then i would add another layer and another layer and tell you have like as much power generation as you could ever need so now that we know how to generate energy in the model we're going to talk about what we can actually do with that electricity so first we're going to talk about how to actually get it moving around your world so there's four different tiers of wire there's copper which can do 20 energy a second 
overcharged iron, which can do 41, overcharged gold, which can do 89, and then overcharged diamond, which can do 163. Now, honestly, I think overcharged gold is going to be your best bet. So all of these are just created with the sheets of that like specific material and copper iron and gold are pretty easy to automate however diamonds you can't actually automate diamonds at least in the base create mod so this one's a bit tougher to actually automate in your world especially because each diamond only gives you two diamond wire so that's quite expensive and i think in most cases gold wire is going to be the way to go now actually placing the wire is pretty easy. All you gotta do is place down this electrical connector, which is relatively cheap, place down a second one, and then you can use any one of these wires to connect it up. And this can kind of be placed anywhere and you can connect up to like the same connector from multiple places. If one connector is broken, all the different connections are broken and the wire is dropped back to you. Now I'm not sure how many is the max that one electrical connector can connect to, or even if there is a max, because I've got 25 connections here and we can still add more. So yeah, I, I'm really just not sure what that maximum is, but it seems like it's pretty substantial if there is one. And connectors can only go 16 blocks. So if I grab my wire here and take it out, you'll see I can connect it to here. But if I go any further, it'll actually turn red. So that's a really nice way to see how far you can connect. And if I actually move off of this, it'll stay connected to that, just like when you're building trains. So that's a really easy way if you're building your connection, find out what your max is, place your connector, and then place down your wire. So the first thing you need to do once you start generating energy is to get some energizers. Now energizers basically allow you to craft the energized items, as well as a few other items in the mod, which are the reactor casing and the overcharged diamond wire. Now you can also make bottles of enchanting, which is pretty cool. So the way that these energizers work is you provide them electricity and rotational energy. And based on the amount of rotational energy and energy is going to dictate the speed. So if we're down at 128, you can see there's a beam that'll start and it'll slowly grow. But if we go ahead and speed this all the way up to 256, it should grow a lot faster. Now we're using the basic energizer. So a lot faster is still pretty slow, but you can see that beam slowly growing. And just to kind of see that in action, if we go ahead and throw one of these under the gold, you'll see it'll really quickly kind of just shoot the beam and energize our item. Now, once I do have my energized iron, I can go ahead and craft it into sheets by pressing it. Or I can just simply energize my sheets without needing to go through that process. You can see if I throw a whole stack on the diamond one, it'll go a lot faster, which is why you'd want to upgrade. Now, like I said, bottles of enchanting can be energized, but they take forever. Right now we're at 256 speed and we've got plenty of energy coming in that we're not actually going to be losing any. And this is still taking quite a long time. And along with being able to energize stuff on depots, you can also do it on a belt. So if I go ahead and throw some items on a belt, as they go by the energizer, they will be energized. While energizing is cool and all, it really only matters for progression through this mod. The real use for electricity is going to be motors. So you can actually craft up basic motors, which are very cheap, strong motors, which are a little more expensive but still comparable, and then reinforced motors, which are pretty expensive but definitely worth the price. And what you use these motors for is you can put electricity into them and they will generate stress just like a creative motor. Um, you can use a lever to power them on and off, or you can right click them to put them on and off. And if you have a wrench, you can change the RPM just like that. So really helpful. And I think the biggest coolest thing in this mod is to actually be able to have motors around your base powered by electricity. Now the basic motor at max energy can do 512 SU. The strong motor can do 2048 SU. And the reinforced motor can do 8192 SU from a single motor, which is really, really cool. Now this energy is probably gonna be really nice for like if you have to travel over a long distance, or if you just have to like go like to like a weird spot or you don't have a lot of room to kind of build your shafts and gearboxes and everything. So Definitely worth the effort and really cool that you can actually just have energy out. And one thing I should mention that's really cool is, let's say we're only generating 40 energy. 
the motor will actually only use 40 energy. So even though this isn't maxed out at 300 energy a second, it's still generating 69 um, SU a second off of this one motor at 40 energy a second. And one last thing to mention is the basic motor can only go up to 128 speed, where the other two motors can go all the way up to our maximum of 256. And the last thing we're going to take a look at is generating heat and nuclear power. Now, when I first started like looking into this, I wasn't too excited, but once I actually placed all the blocks and saw the system works, it's really cool and it seems like it would be really fun to play with in survival. The first thing we're going to look at is how to actually generate heat using solar plates. So there's a basic solar plate and the advanced solar plate, which both have really simple crafting recipes, although you will need to get overcharged iron to make the advanced plate. It'll each generate a certain amount of heat per second. Now these will only generate during the day, so that's one thing to keep in mind where if you're trying to run your plant at night, it may shut down if you haven't planned for that. Now the way the heat works is actually really interesting. So what it'll actually do is it'll spread all of the heat amongst all of the pipes you have connected. So if these heat pipes that we can connect, and you see when I connect this one, it'll slowly kind of get up to temperature until all of these are kind of all at the same temperature. So immediately, they all just kind of even out down in the 300s, but you can see them slowly heating back up to 420 heat, which is what it has at the max that like this one generator is able to apply. And there we go. Now that it's heated up to 420 degrees, you can see that each one of these is at 420. And it's really interesting that the whole system just kind of spreads itself out slowly as you kind of build up your system and as you generate heat. Now, if you didn't want to have it all spread out evenly, what we can do is you can use these heat pumps. So what the heat pump will do is you can see all of this area over here is 60 degrees. Whoa. <laughs> and you can see this part is going to start heating up really fast. And if you heat up over 10,000 degrees, you'll saw it actually melt down and turn into lava, which is what we just saw. So you do want to make sure that you're actually using some of that heat, because if you don't, you are likely to have a meltdown in your pipes. Now, there are two ways to actually use the heat. The first is generating stress units with these Stirling engines, which are pretty much dirt cheap. So here we have five of these generating 60 heat per second, which gets us 300. Then we have three of these, each using 100 heat per second, which means that we're generating 512 SU for each one of these, which is a really cool way to just quickly generate lots of stress units. Now, it's not a ton of stress, like a water wheel is comparable to one of these, but because these are really cheap, it would be an interesting way to get permanent power if you'd rather use these than water wheels. But these Stirling engines come in a lot more handy once we start getting into nuclear power. And the other way to use these are these boiler heaters. So essentially what the boiler heaters do is first they actually use up a lot of heat. So over on this system where we overheated, I threw a boiler heater on here and you can see we're hovering down around 100. And we're not at risk of kind of getting up over that 10,000 and burning down. But they can also be used as a blaze burner. So instead of a blaze burner needing fuel, you can use one of these boiler heaters and you can actually heat up your basin. Now, I don't believe these can be overcharged. I'm pretty sure you can only use it for like the basic blaze burner recipes, but it's really cool nonetheless and an interesting way to kind of get around needing to produce fuel for your blaze burners. So now we're going to talk about nuclear power, which is actually done in a really interesting way in this mod. So there's essentially only three blocks you need to actually build your nuclear power setup. You need a fuel inserter, a reactor rod, and a heat vent, and then you do need some kind of funnel to put in your nuclear fuel. Now once you do that and you put your nuclear fuel in, your heat vent will generate a ton of heat. You can see we've got all these boilers, and they're all releasing 100 degrees a second off of a single reactor rod, which is really cool. Now for actually generating the fuel, it can be unlimitedly generated. So this thorium is a new ore that's essentially added that you can find as you're mining around. You can mine it, get your thorium, but you can also then duplicate it. So with water, stone, and clay mixed up in a basin, you get two thorium. So as long as you balance your creation of thorium, you should be able to not have to worry about mining for it. But then you need this radioactive thorium, which is crafted by crushing thorium, and you get a 10% chance to get that radioactive thorium, and then you get some iron and experience as a little bonus. But then once you have your reactive thorium, you're going to press an iron sheet, and then two other presses, and then you get nuclear fuel, 
which you can then pop into your system and generate tons and tons of heat. And you can see here, we have all these Stirling engines and also these two boiler heaters and we're still overheating. So what I'm actually think I might do is replace that Stirling engine with a boiler heater because that'll use up a lot more of that heat in that specific spot. Anyway, so we've got four of these reactor rods here and a ton of Stirling engines all running at 512 stress units, but it's gonna be really hard to balance this because if you look at the output, it's not really exact. So you can see it kind of bounces around a little bit, um, kind of as these go through like their cycle of producing energy and then like cooling back down. So you can see we're actually really not using enough heat in this system. So what I think we'll probably need to do is expand this a little bit. So we're actually using up a lot more of this heat <laughs> because if we're not, then we're going to, melt down these pipes and if we're melting down these pipes and we're not using enough heat we are at risk of melting down in a reactor so anyway with all of these guys here we should be at a point where we're hopefully starting to cool down it looks like we are starting to cool down slowly which is great now one thing you'll notice is here we have this like two by two area these don't get activated automatically so what you do need is for each like vertical row you do need a separate inserter and heat extractor to make them active. So if I went and did this, and then we'll throw this here, and then we'll throw some nuclear fuel in there, now we can see that this row will start to activate. And let's hook that up to our heat system so we don't end up getting a meltdown. Now there is a max size of the reactors, but they get pretty massive. So we can go all the way to here which is 32 blocks. So you can have a 32 block long reactor. Now, one thing is <laughs> when you try to go and deconstruct these, they will explode. The nuclear reactors are really quite cool, but just like in real life, they can be dangerous. So what I'm gonna do is put myself into survival by a reactor. And you can see, oh, not bad, right? That's because I have this reactor glass and reactor casing around it. Otherwise, I would be not doing so hot. So these are basically just decorative. Um, so you can use glass everywhere or casings everywhere. And you can see when I break this, I'm okay. But as soon as I expose one of these, I'm going to start being radioactively hurt, which is wither 2, poison 2, mining fatigue, and nausea. And I'm just going to turn the nausea effects off for the purpose of this video. Now, obviously that was pretty bad, but wait, I'm still in survival. And that's because I'm wearing leather gear. If you wear a full suit of leather gear, and then you can actually wear the engineer's goggles on your head, you won't be affected by like the radioactive hurt. Um, now, if I were to go and we're gonna force a meltdown in this machine by taking off all of the heat extracting possibilities. So you'll see these are gonna slowly heat up all the way to 10,000. And once I get to 10,000, you're gonna notice, it won't happen right away, wait, are these maybe 100? I think these are 100,000. I think the heaters can get up to 10,000 and then they'll break down, but I think these can get all the way up to 100. So we're gonna sit here and we're gonna watch it. Uh, we got 23 fuel, so that should be more than enough to get us there. Oh, there we go. So I, for some reason we didn't get an explosion. There was, there's supposed to be an explosion that doesn't break blocks, but should do damage. But now we have this corium left over. Um, now we can mine this corium very, very slowly. But if we go ahead and take our armor off, it is safe. So when you do get a radioactive decay, you do have to go ahead and clear out your reactor. Get all this corium out of there, but it's not nuclear waste. So you can just throw it away and trash it. Actually... Oh, looks like we were still melting down because I did start taking damage. So I guess that is reactive. Um, there must have been enough glass or blocks around it that it didn't affect me right away. Or maybe it was me picking it up. Yeah, that was it. So I think it, for some reason the item itself is radioactive. Or maybe it's just less radioactive? Um, but one thing you'll notice is that one piece has <laughs> started to just travel. Um, and that's because like, as this corium will just kind of start digging a hole straight down. Um, 
I'm not sure why this one didn't, but like, you do want to make sure that you go and clear this out right away. Because one, it's slightly radioactive, and two, it will kind of destroy itself and your base as it kind of just like decays and <laughs> falls apart. Overall, I really, really love this mod. When I first got into it, I was a bit off-put because, let's be honest, the textures are not great and some of the models could use improvement, but it's just, it's so create-esque, like having to actually like build all these like physical block structures to generate the power and you need like production lines to like make your power better and you can get like nuclear power, but it's not just a big blocky place. It's actually like a multi-block structure you have to have support for. Um, both for feeding and taking like the heat away. So it's it's a really cool implementation of power along with create and I'm really happy I went and took a look at this mod because that's it's definitely really cool and so far has been my favorite implementation of electricity along with create. So that's gonna be the end of today's video. I'll see you guys next time, but in the meantime, go create something beautiful.